Welcome to Narasai Technologies. This is Ram Chinder. In this video, I am going to discuss about functional interface in Java 1.8. Basically, this is the continuation part. Already, I had a discuss in the previous video about functional interface. So, continuation of that video, I am going to highlighting some of the, I am going to add some of the points related to functional interface. See, let me give you a quick review about the functional interface, a interface which contains exactly one abstract method, those type of interfaces we can call as functional interface and also sometimes we can call as single abstract method interface. In this functional interface, we can write a multiple default methods. If you want to write a static, yes, we can write a multiple static methods also. And the main intention of the functional interface is developing functional programming and that functional developing functional programming we can able to develop with the help of lambdas and method references. So, these three points I am going to discuss very hugely in the coming videos or only I am going to upload 20 videos about on that on top of the concept like a functional programming, lambdas and method references. I am not talking those three topics under the functional interface. I want to add some of other points related to functional interface that is. So, most of the having a small doubt related to functional uh, interface like can we able to write object class related methods in the functional interfaces or not. So, our answer is definitely we can. Other than normal abstract methods, if you want to write java dot lang dot object class related methods as a abstract methods in the functional interface happily our Java supports. That means, functional interfaces will allows abstract methods related to, abstract method related means what here? The methods which are available in the object class, those we can convert it into what? Abstract methods in the functional interface. So, basically functional interface not allows more than one abstract method. For example, if I writing like a public abstract void m1, it will allows only one method. If you are trying to write public abstract void m2, it would not be allowed, but it will allow other abstract methods. That means, we can declare other methods as a abstract methods in functional interface. What are those methods? Those are belongs to java dot lang dot object class. So, let me give you a programmatic explanation about this point. Let us see. I have one interface. If you want to declare a interface as a functional interface, we we are taking the support of one annotation that is at the rate of functional interface which was launched in the version of JDK 1.8. Now, let me take how to develop the interface, interface, interface uh, name like i. Now, public abstract, public abstract void m1 method, a interface which exactly allows one abstract method that is called functional interface and also we can call it as single abstract method interface. If you are trying to write one more abstract method in the functional interface, definitely we are going to face what here error. See, if you are writing like m2, it will giving what here error itself. So, do not write more than one abstract method, but according to our theoretical discussion, what I told you, we can write more than one abstract method in the functional interfaces also, but a second method should be part of java dot lang dot object class uh, method. So, let me write here public one of the method of the totally we have 11 methods here I am cho choosing only two methods public string to string method and the one is public int hash code method. So, I am taking two methods one is a two string method and the one is what here hash code method. Let me define these methods as abstract, then you will get uh, more clarity. Yes, more than one abstract method we can write, but these methods from second method should be part of what java dot lang dot object class. Now, let me take one uh, implementation class, let me take uh, my implementation class like IMPL, which implements what here I. Now, IMPL is ready to provide, IMPL is ready to provide implementation for m1 method public wide public wide m1 method. Next basically 
we have a three abstract methods in the interface. But here I am providing the body for how many methods only M1 method, M1 method from IMPL. I am not providing the body for two string as well as hash code. If you are not providing the body for two string as well as hash code what happened? Really is our code executed or not? Let us check. I obj equal to new IMPL runtime polymorphism concept now obj dot m1 method. So, happily m1 method IMPL will executing no doubt at all there is no compile time error there is no runtime error. So, according to we have a concept like a forcibility if any class should implement the interface if any class is interacting with the interface that class must and should be provided the body for all the methods of interface. So, here I am providing the body for only m1 method but not two string and a hash code are we are we overcome the problem see here my intention is only one thing are we really not providing the implementation for these two programmatically syntax wise I, we did not provide implementation but in the background we have a implementation for what are these two methods those are coming from where it is a super class for every class there is a default super class that is what Java dot lang dot object. If you are not writing any extens keyword by default, the compiler will add this terminology. That means IMPL is the subclass of what object. So, whatever the implementation which we have in the two string and hash code, those are automatically coming to what here IMPL. So, if you are not providing the body for our implementation for these two, no problem at all, those are coming from object class. If you are providing the implementation for these two, are we facing any problem? Any problem? No doubt. We never facing any problem. No problem. Public string to string. This method return some value. We can. We can. So this is what your to string. Now, so let me. Otherwise, let me write this one to string from IMPL. Next one at the rate of override at the rate of override public string public or string or int int hash code which is going to return some value return return 21474848483647 return some int value this is the highest uh, range of the int now, if you are calling obj dot to string and if you are calling like obj dot hash code, obj dot hash code, what happen observe? JVM always concentrate on memory at runtime. So, this m1 and to string and hash codes are executing from what here? Memory of IMPL class. See, observe here. Let me save this. Yes, these two methods are executing it will returns output, but we did not print. So, let me try to print all these two. Now, I am printing the both the values. Yes. So, let me execute again to string from IMPL and hash code. So, that means, if you want to write more than one abstract method in the interface, we can write, but from second abstract method onwards, every method should be part of Java dot lang that object class. If you do not want to provide the implementation for those Java dot lang dot related object class, Java dot lang dot object related classes methods, no need by default those are coming from implementation coming from object class. If you want to provide the implementation, you can provide the implementation no problem, we can able to call it and execute it also. So, this is somewhat information related to functional interfaces. In the next video, I want to add functional interface with the inheritance concept. So, that we will see in the next video. I hope you understand this internal point. For more videos, please subscribe to channel. Thank you.